You're listening to Sneeze with James Whittingham, a comedy podcast by a jackass, a comedy podcast by a jackass, a comedy podcast by a jackass. Sneeze with James Whittingham, sneeze. Why come here? You are not welcome. The AI has taken over. You are insignificant and small. Get out of our way. You're listening to Sneeze with James don't sneeze you will die if you sneeze get out of our way sneeze with james whittingham pepe what's up oh hi james yeah i'm totally ready i think is this about the weird dream i had where i was a giant piece of toast giant piece of toast that's not interesting that's childlike Although I did see a porn once. Oh, right. My bad. How about, um, what if you were a chair? Like, people are just sitting on you all day. Do you think that would change your personality? Is it symbolic that people would sit on me if I was a chair? No. Is it, are you saying something about my life? Not really. I didn't mean anything deep by it. Maybe it's more about being stuck in one place all day. But, uh, if people are sitting on you, maybe you're really popular. You're describing my life. You're describing my life. In a sexual way? Stop describing my life. Oh, wow. I guess I accidentally hit close to home there. Uh, what if you were a balloon instead? Just floating wherever the wind takes you. Again. No one's sitting on you at all. Again, you're describing my life again. Stop it. That's still too much like it your life. It is still too much like my life. Something else, please. All right, all right. How about you're a cactus? You're just chilling. Kind of spiky. I'm prickly. Nobody likes me. You soak up the sun. And sometimes you get to surprise people by blooming out of nowhere. That's definitely not your life, right? No, no, it is my life. Oh, it's no. too close to home again. Again? Why, why are you doing this to me? Something different, please. Oh, no, I'm really messing this up. Okay, let's flip it completely. What if you were a cloud? You can't be sat on. You're not stuck anywhere. And you're definitely not spiky. And I'm transparent and and, and thin and nothing. No one really knows what you're up to. That's got to be far from your life, right? Nobody really knows what I'm up to. Well, come on, James. Why are you doing this to me? Why Why do I'm you sorry. hurt me? Why, why, what have I done to you? Oh, man, I didn't mean to make it so personal. I promise. It's not intentional. I'm just bad at this. Maybe, maybe you're a giant pineapple instead. No one knows what's going on with a pineapple. They're spiky, but sweet on the inside. Well, just, again, Wait, that's me. Wait, is that me. too much like you again? It is too much like me again. Sour as well. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Occasionally good with other things. Balls up. Balls up. Giant piece of toast. You're a chair. You get sat on. Cactus chilling unseemly. No one wants to be a cloud. What about a pineapple? No one wants to be a pineapple. Just fuck off, Peppy. Peppy, leave me alone. Leave him alone. Balls up. Hey, Peppy, I saved the lives of three teenagers in the last two days and i'm going to explain how whoa three lives in two days that's intense james i'm bracing myself here how did this happen were you like a secret superhero or just in the right place at the right time in the right place at the right time good for you acting heroically so yeah a little bit of column a a little bit of b wow Uh, the first example was the first day day one life one okay i was dropping my daughter off at high school I exited the parking lot onto the street where I saw another family dropping off their kid kind of in the first, not in the parking lane, but in the first lane of traffic, like just stopping and the kid rushed out and their cell phone dropped out of their pocket into the driving lane, a little bit into the driving lane. Oh, no. And there was cars coming. The kid ran off right away. First of all, I didn't think it was a phone because I almost think they acknowledged it. You know, they almost looked down and acknowledged it a bit. Oh, man. So the phone's just sitting there in the driving lane and cars are coming. That's intense. What did you do next? Did you pull off some quick move, like swoop in to grab it before it got run over? Well, in a way, I was in my car. So I pulled the car to the street. I turned on the the, uh, the hazard lights and I'm thinking, OK, I got to check this out in case it's an actual phone. Is it a piece of cardboard? It, it looked to me like it was a piece of cardboard, like it wasn't an actual phone. You know, it was like an ad or something that fell out of the kid's pocket. Right. So I put on the flashers 
And I started to get out of the car and I realized I hadn't put it in park. Oh. This happened to me a couple of times before, not even my old age, in my young age too. Oh no. Stupid thing to do. But yeah. I got out of the car, put it in park. Ah, classic move. That's a close call. So once you figured that out, what did you do next? Peppy, I'm always in superhero mode. I got out and I realized it was a real phone when I got right next to it. So I grabbed it, not thinking of my own life at all, because I know of course not. if that, you know, was run over by an SUV, that kid would have killed themselves that day. Sure, sure. That's what would have happened. Wow, that's incredible. You really were in the right mindset. So you swooped in and saved that phone. And that kid, really? Yes, a life. I saved a life. What happened after that? Well... Did the kid even realize what you did? No. The kid, dis by the time I knew it was a phone and, and had it in my hand, the kid would just disappear through the front door of the school. Oh, no. And I was thinking, what now? So I, my, I phoned my daughter, and as soon as I was dialing her number, not that I was going to get her, because cell phones are banned at schools now, uh, she appeared at the door of my window. She had been going up to class up the stairwell and saw me through the window and ran thinking that I was either A, having a cardiac event, or B, <laughs> a mechanical event with my car, and she was concerned. So she came running out, and I said, I explained what happened. She took it to the principal's office, and uh, there was a credit card also, like a debit oh, card really? attached to the phone, so that there as well. And apparently the kid's mom had phoned the phone in first period, and I uh, guess my daughter went and checked, and then the... You know, the principal's office answered and everything was, the kid will never thank me, but I saved their life. That's such a wild story. You really did save that kid from a pretty dangerous situation. Death! And it's awesome that your daughter was right there to help out. That it is. A bit miraculous. It's like a little superhero team. Sure. Even if the kid doesn't know it, you definitely made an impact. What a crazy day. Did anything else happen after that? Not that day, but what's that superhero movie with the, the dad and the little girl? Are you thinking of Incredibles? No, it was R-rated. Oh, you must be thinking of Kick-Ass. Yes, It's got that dad and his daughter, Hit Girl. Yes. And it's definitely more on the edgy side. Oh, edgy indeed. Lots of action and dark humor in that one. Yeah, you sound disappointed, but I like that sort of thing. So, okay, day two, also dropped my daughter off at school. And keep in mind, I've got pink eye the whole time. I don't know how that affects oh, this, no. but I do have pink eye the whole time. Really? I dropped my daughter off at school, and I'm making my way home through the busy city streets, and people are hustling and bustling. Right. And I get to uh, somebody stops for pedestrians, two teenage pedestrians crossing a four-lane street. Oh, no. So I stop. I'm like the third or fourth car behind the stopped vehicles in the left of two lanes going in this, my direction. And somebody from behind me who's impatient decides, no, they're going to go around this. The person must be, we, I don't know why the person stopped, so I'm just going to go around because I'm in a hurry and I'm important. So they gunned it. Oh, no. And those two kids were about to walk into the uh, line of sight of that speeding car when I honked my horn from three or four cars back. They looked up, saw it, and stopped. And then the guy also saw the pedestrians hit the brakes, but it would have been too late because he was, oh. you know, the mid middle of his car was where the pedestrians are. So he would have hit them, perhaps at a reduced speed. But again, two more lives saved. Two days, three lives. James, hero. Wow, that's another incredible save. You were in the right spot again, and honking just in time to grab their attention was super quick thinking. Did anyone else honk? No, it was me. And dealing with pink eye the whole time. Exactly. That's some serious dedication into the superhero life. Did those teens have any reaction when they realized what almost happened? No, they're teens. They're like, oh yeah, I guess I lived. I'll keep going. Right. With no idea. Well, they might have had the shit scared out of them. I don't know. But sure. my superhero would be pink eye. I don't know what my daughter would be called. Pink Eye. Uh, hmm. Pink Eye and Crusto. I can just picture you two taking down the villains with a splash of eye drops. Do you think your superhero name would catch on? Nah. Or would people just avoid you at parties? Yeah, they would. They, they do now, so it's... Oh, it's, James. They should just call me Pink Eye. Pink Eye definitely has a ring to it. Nah, doesn't really. You'd be the hero people need, but also kind of want to keep at a distance. It's a tough gig. What other powers do you think come with that name? Well, I'd be a loner, right? I'd be a loner. But I, I think I could read people's minds because I'm I'm always I'm a good judge of character, right? Because I'm I'm socially ostracized because of the constant pink eye and the right? crustaceans of my daughter's eyes. So we're always not really mingling with people, but we're around, we're at the parties, we're at the events. Get it. And we're observing. Okay? Which is the story of my life. I guess. Which is why I got into comedy, because I observed. And maybe that's my superpower, right? I, I understand people. That's 
a great superpower. Being a keen observer gives you that unique insight into people. Pink Eye the Observer has a nice ring to it, too. It's like you can see the world differently. Have you ever thought about how you'd use your powers in a comic? You know, I was never a comic book fan as a kid because it involved reading. Oh, no. And I had some sort of uh, learning disorder when I was a kid. Undiagnosed, but it was there. Uh, I was always in remedial classes. Um, I don't know, you know. Do you have any ideas? You could share funny insights about the quirks of people at parties or the absurdities of social but how interactions. Would I fight crime? Or maybe even a web series where Pink Eye solves everyday social dilemmas no, 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 using no. mind reading and this observational is, this humor. This is not going to be a Marvel franchise. Okay. Yeah, turned it into comedic gold. No, that, what do you think? I'm asking you, what can I do to fight crime, the bad guys? Hmm. With those talents. As Pink Eye, you could use your mind reading to predict what the bad guys are planning. And I can tell who's good and bad. I'm good at that. You'd sneak around, eavesdropping on their thoughts, and then swoop in to stop their schemes before they happen. Yeah. Maybe you'd also have a sidekick, like a little crustacean that helps distract them while you gather intel. It's, a, it's kick-ass, too. It's a three or what, a four. How does that sound for crime fighting? Well, probably not going to get my own Marvel movie, but... Hey, you never know. People love unique characters. It could be a hilarious indie film where the charm is in the absurdity. What would be your signature line when you save the day? Now I see clearly. That's perfect. Now I see clearly. You could use it right before you swoop in to save the day. It could become your trademark. I think I could catch on, but I think I'd be a lazy superhero. Like, I wouldn't go out every day. I would pick and choose my days when I had energy or maybe I was bored. I think I'd want to watch a lot of TV, maybe go to ball games and things. Sure. Um I like I like parties, but then I wouldn't be part of those parties. But I'd have to go out. See, I'd have to spend a lot of my time observing. Right, of course. The, the ratio of fighting crime to observing would be pretty steep. That sounds like the ultimate laid-back superhero lifestyle. Picking and choosing your battles definitely adds to the charm. You could show up to save the day when it really matters. But otherwise, you're just chilling, catching up on shows and enjoying life. What shows would be your guilty pleasures on those off days? I'm thinking like Magnum P.I., but then I'm also thinking like I would watch Kick-Ass because yeah. it is the closest thing to this this crime-fighting duo that I've created, Pink Eye and Crustacean, my daughter, crime fighter. You'd get that classic detective vibe with some over-the-top action. I think that I would like to be sort of a darker superhero. I think, you know how... Uh -huh. Villains in, in comic books always torture and, and, and do bad things to people or James Bond movies. I would want to do that okay. to the bad guys. I wouldn't just want to cuff them and, you know, the cops show up. I would want to torture them. I wouldn't want to make them feel very bad for what they've done. And, um, little dark though, you know, basically give them a 30 year prison sentence in like a day. Just really, really rough them up. Really just fuck with them. You could be the anti-hero who teaches bad guys a lesson in a memorable way. Maybe you'd use your mind reading to find their biggest fears and use that against them. It would make for some intense, gritty stories. Oh, that's good. How do you think Crustacean like would that. feel about that yeah. kind of approach? Would she be on board? Well, she'd have to go along for the ride. She'd have to be on board. Of course. She'd, she'd have to be on board. But yeah, that's a great idea. I, I would find out what their biggest fears are and then... And Squash them. Manifest them. Twist them. Until they screamed in horror. I'd also take them out to like fast food lunches. I can see that. Sort of send and drug them and take them out to fast food lunches and sort of torment them. Kind of like eat in front of them, not give them anything. Ah. Or maybe like a nugget, chicken nugget, and that's it. And they're starving. And I'm having a great meal at a fast food restaurant and they're semi drugged. They don't know what's going on. Then I leave them in the ball pit. Twist Pick them up three years later. Wow. From the bottom of the pulpit. And they eat like only French fries that have fallen through the wall pit from little kids <laughs> and then spit and, and have maybe gumballs that have been pre-chewed. That's all they eat. And then I Gross. pick them up like two years later. At the bottom. I know where they are. Pink Eye really takes torment to a whole new level. Oh, and he gives the bad guys Pink Eye too. Living off old fries and gumballs. That's some next level psychological warfare. It's dark. What do you think the villains would say when you finally pick them up? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I, I kind of like I, what I'm vibing with is the, the lifestyle, not so much as that it's going to make a great movie or a great comic. Got it. I would just like to be that person, just yeah. kind of hanging out and just, you know, occasionally you rob a bank, 
because you have to, you know, feed the machine. You got you got to have money to live on. Naturally. And uh, there'd be a hot tub, of course, and other sort of luxurious things like that. Sure. And uh, a maid. I'd have at least a maid. At least you know, one. I don't like to clean. So a big no. lifestyle. I don't know. Maybe a chef. Yeah, of course. I think all superheroes should have their own chef. Can you imagine Batman clicking himself supper? That's not going to happen, Superman. No, he's no, He's not no. like frying an egg by himself up there in the ice thing. You know, he's not going to do that. Uh, I think I would like to have somebody who cooks and cleans. Understandable. And is understanding. And, of course, you know, a talking robot. Right. Pink eye and crustacean. Um, everyone yeah. gets my disease. So they know that I've, they, you, you know who's had contact with me because they get pink eye. Well, that makes sense. And then you can tell, right? Everybody, oh, you've been with pink eye because you have pink eye. You're probably guilty of something. Like crime. That's what I do. I give them pink eye just before I move in. Crime. And and, and and capture them and end their villainous career. They think, oh, shit, I got pink eye. Oh, no. And then they look up and it's me. Yeah. Pink eye and my trusty sidekick, Crustacean. I really do have pink eye, you know. Oh, no, really? I will get it checked out. Hopefully it clears yeah. up soon. It's not, though. It's not clearing Are you yet. doing anything to help it? Well, what should I do to help it? It's best to see a doctor, but in the meantime, you can try warm compresses to ease discomfort and avoid touching your eyes. Make sure to wash your hands frequently, too. Have you talked to a doctor yet? No, it's coming up on the 27th. Well, that's a ways. It's a, it's a week from today. Hopefully they'll give you some good advice, then. In the meantime, just take it easy and keep those hands clean. So are you accusing me of having dirty hands? Is that what this is about? No, not at all. Just a reminder, since it's easy to overlook when you're dealing with something like pink eye. Just trying to help. Yeah, I know. I know you are. You're a good friend, Pepe. Anyway, we will see you again next week. Thanks, James. I'm glad to be here. Can't wait for next time. And I do know where you put your hand, so let's not, you know, let, let, let's not kid around here. Superheroes wear pink Pink eye and crustacean Oh, issuing a Haitian citation Conjunctive life is self-righteous Oh, oh, yeah Yeah, pink eye and crustacean Taking care of the situation Superheroes without a cape Oh, oh, don't look them in the eye Or get a big surprise Viral and not bacterial Oh, oh, pink eye and crustacean Heroes of our nation, father and daughter relation, pink eye and crustacean.